Hey everyone, so take two, because the dogs kept barking through the first video, which really wouldn't have pleased you at all. Now, in this week's future news, which you can see on fanaticalfuturist.com or 311institute.com, um, these are the stories. Now, I'm going to go through seven, and this follows on from last week's news, etc, etc, etc. So last week we talked about the release of Google Gemini, so we've done that, we've covered it. Now, um, from Google's other artificial intelligence unit, DeepMind, we've actually seen a new kind of artificial intelligence training model being used. Now, this is where we actually use human behaviors rather than text, images, video, and audio, et cetera, et cetera, to train artificial intelligence models. Now, it's something I've seen, I saw originally with Toyota. Now, unlike platforms like ChatGPT or GPT-4, from OpenAI, which are what we what we call large language models. These artificial intelligences are more large behavioral models, and they go hand in hand with large vision models. So while everyone's still talking about LLMs, we're seeing the rise of LBMs and LVMs. That's it. So this particular one here is simply where DeepMind's artificial intelligence uh, analyzes human behaviors. Now, it could be a sport, it could be something social or whatever it happens to be, and then tries to understand the context and the reasoning behind whatever it happens to be. Now, that actually has real world applications in a whole variety of different fields. Uh, but at a fundamental level, it helps artificial, understand, artificial intelligence un better understand the nuances of human behaviors, human relationships, interactions, and so on and so forth, as AI increasingly tries to encroach on human territory. Now, uh, next one, we've got artificial intelligence beating humans in a physical sport. Now, one of my clients is T-Mobile, and over in the US, they sponsor the 5G drone races, which you can watch on the likes of ESPN and so on and so forth. And in this particular case, this is a world first where an artificial intelligence in this case, has beaten the world's fastest drone racers. Now, in this case, an artificial intelligence controlled a drone using machine vision, and just like most drone races, the drones had to fly through and around obstacles and all that kind of stuff, and the AI won by literally a second, but it still won. Now, this next one from December the 15th actually might seem a little bit weird, um, scientists have, in Japan have managed to prove that when eels zap different fish and critters basically in the water, um, those critters absorb new genes from the water and from their environment. Now, this might not seem particularly interesting, but it actually ties in with another post that I did recently on a new emerging technology that I spotted called electrogenetics. Now, electrogenetics in healthcare is being used to cure a variety of genetic ailments, not necessarily disorders, and I'll explain. So this is where we use electricity to change and alter the behavior of genes and genomes. Now, when we start thinking about the relevance of this from a futures perspective, what happens if we start packing electrogenetic interfaces into things like wearables, like smartwatches and so on and so forth, where through the application of electricity, you could change how your genes behave, the hormones they produce, how much of those hormones they produce and so on and so forth. So while this is an incredibly new area, like incredibly new area, it's quite fascinating. And um, eels basically have actually just made the case for researchers. So uh, the next one, um, in another world first, we've actually seen yeast uh, that has been created using synthetic biology and synthetic DNA. And this particular yeast is 50% artificial. Now, again, that might not sound particularly interesting because what we have is we've got a yeast that is 50% a synthetic organism. However, when we have a look at MIT, Harvard, University College of London, a number of years ago, I wrote an article that uh, gave you details on their projects to try to create an artificial human. 
Now, when we start having a look at the advances that we've made in synthetic biology, at the moment, we've created a yeast that is 50% artificial. And so it's a synthetic life form or a hybrid life form at the moment. But at some point, that will be 100%. And then we'll go from yeast to rodents, to bigger mammals, and then eventually we'll start trying to use this technology on humans. Conspiracy theorists, eat your hearts out. Yeah. Um, the next one, obviously, we've got rumors swirling around OpenAI's rumored Q. Uh, generally, it's thought that it's a human level artificial intelligence, essentially an AGI. However, it isn't. However, it does seem to have characteristics of AGI, but at a very, very basic level. In fact, when we have a look at AGI, these AIs that we've produced today are very good at understanding human language, but when it comes to reasoning, abstract thinking, context, and so on and so forth, they're actually pretty rubbish. Um, I have a lot of experience because I've been trying to use them to do abstract thinking, and they're really rubbish. In fact, my pet dogs are actually better at abstract thinking than this $90 billion artificial intelligence. Um, so that goes to show you just how great my dogs are. Anyway, uh, this next one. Uh, so on December the 17th, Google's DeepMind artificial intelligence put 380,000 new compounds into an open source materials database. Now, while that, again, might not actually sound particularly interesting, over the past 10 to 20 years, we've added about, as humans, we've added about 400 new compounds to these material databases. And these material databases are looked after by, for example, the US Department of Energy and so on and so forth. So sort of government open source databases. But now that AI has helped identify 380,000 new compounds, that means that we are on the verge of a yet another materials revolution. And everything that you use is made out of material. So the more revolutionary materials that we can create, the more revolutionary experiences and products and services that we can develop. And that affects every industry. So now, again, artificial intelligence has also just identified 200 CRISPR-like systems. Now, for those of you that don't know CRISPR, CRISPR is a sort of three billion year old genetic editing technology. Um, it is a revolution in itself. It's a game changer in the healthcare space where we've already used CRISPR gene editing to do in vivo gene editing. And in cases where people have actually had uh, a whole variety of gen inherited genetic diseases, We've been able to clip out the bad genes, clip in new genes, and they've no longer had those inherited genetic conditions. So essentially, they've been cured. Now, if you imagine how powerful CRISPR has already demonstrated itself to be, and now think that AI has helped identify another 200 CRISPR-like systems. Some are going to be great, some are going to be bad. That's staggering. And again, that plays straight into synthetic biology's uh, playbook. Uh, then here on the December the 19th, um, researchers have created an edible battery that's safe to eat. Now, funnily enough, in America, over two and a half thousand children eat batteries every year. So now, maybe they think that they're a great snack or whatever it happens to be. But as we all know, if children eat batteries, they can kill them. Um, so these edible batteries have got a variety of different applications. So firstly, you could, you could put them into children's toys. That's it. So that's one. However, you could also put them into things like pills to power smart pills. You could put them into nano machines and nanobots to power the little micro machines that increasingly are sort of going around our body, hunting cancers, or even doing in vivo surgery, as I talked about a very long time ago. Um, that's a bleeding edge technology or a beyond bleeding edge technology. But yes, we do actually have some nanobots that have been able to prove that they can do some very, very basic in vivo, in vivo human surgery. So go and search the blog on that one. And then this finally, this particular one for the week, um, we've got new acoustic cameras. So we all know cameras. You take a photo, click. Um, these cameras work in very much the same way as your regular camera in your smartphone, except they take pictures of sound. So for example, the room that I'm in at the moment might actually be slightly echoey. And if someone was standing at the door over there and took a photo, 
you could actually take a photo of the sound waves and the sound patterns in this room. Now, from a from an acoustic engineering perspective, you know, if we want to create special spaces or we want to create auditoriums or event venues like the Sphere in Las Vegas, being able to take a photo of a space and actually see how the spatial audio is propagating around that space shortcuts a whole variety of work. And that's it for this week. So if you want to see more news like this, um, I talk about all kinds of different emerging technologies across all kinds of different categories, different sectors, and so on and so forth, then just head over to fanaticalfuturist.com and 311institute.com. And that's it from me. So take care.